So today I'm going to be showing you how I set up my programming environment on my Windows 10 machine. Of course, none of this is necessary, but if you're trying to follow along in the tutorials that I give, then this will give you a sense of how I have everything set up. So what you're going to want to do is just open up the Microsoft Store, and you are going to need to be an administrator for this to work. So if you go into your search and you just type in Ubuntu, you can see down here you get uh, you know, sort of a number of results. If I just open up the Ubuntu app here, you can see that this is just an app in the store. So I've installed it on my computer already. If you're looking at this page for the first time, you should see there's a get button here. You can click the get button and you're going to have to fill in some information. Now, before you do that, you need to make sure that we have turned on the Windows subsystem for Linux. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to open up our control panel. We're going to go into programs. We want to get to programs and features. And we're going to go to turn Windows features on or off. See the load list up here. We scroll down. And down near the bottom, we see this Windows subsystem for Linux. You're going to want to make sure that's checked. Click OK. And then you're going to need to restart your computer. Once you've restarted your computer, you can come back into the store. Click the Get button. That will be right here. Sign into the Microsoft Store. If you need to do that, just follow the prompts. It's going to install the product for you. Now, if I click Launch here, what's going to happen is you're going to see that this says Installing. This may take a few minutes. And so essentially what we're going to be doing uh, here is actually installing the subsystem on our computer. So this is what's going to let us use Ubuntu within our Windows 10 environment. Of course, to write code, you also need a code editor or text editor. Now, my text editor of choice is Visual Studio Code. It's a cross-platform produced by Microsoft, and I like it because it's incredibly lightweight. It's not sort of overloaded with features, but it's powerful enough to have the shortcuts, the keys, the file management built in. And also, um, if I go into my Visual Studio Code here, there's just a few um, nice add-ons. So the built-in terminal works really well. You can have built-in uh, File Explorer. That works really well. The hotkeys um, are very similar to something like Sublime, except this is free. This is cross-platform. Um, and I find that it typically runs better than Atom or similar editors. So th again, my setup is going to be the Windows subsystem. I'm going to be working in Visual Studio Code almost all of the time. And if you set it up like this, following along in the tutorials should be no problem. Okay, so here I'm being prompted, prompted to enter my new Unix name. Um, so I'm just going to enter partially developed here. Uh, the issue with that is that I should set this up as a lowercase string. Now I need to enter in a password, so I'm just going to do that right now. We're going to be prompted to retype the password. Passwords are going to look to match. And now you can see we're dealing with a, um, a bash here. Now, if you've never used Linux or, Ubu or Ubuntu before, don't worry. All of this will be explained. Um, but in particular, I think it's kind of interesting to take a look at um, sort of why I like this setup so much. And the reason is going to be that if I open up my Visual Studio code here, I've pulled open my terminal down at the bottom. If I type bash here, you can see that, in fact, now we're using the Linux bash inside of our text editor. And so when I need to do things with my different programming languages, right? So if I'm running Python and I need to pip install a package, I can do this right here. Everything's going to work perfectly. So those two steps will get you set up exactly as I am. Um, and if you're running a Linux distribution already, or if you're running Mac OS, you can still use Visual Studio Code, and you should be able to use the built-in terminals on your operating system to accomplish roughly the same goals. Um, so it's really only on Windows 10 that you're going to need to take these extra steps. If you're running a previous version of Windows, then you will need to look elsewhere to find 
the packages in the specific languages that we're looking to install. Um, but hopefully that shouldn't be a problem as they come up.